Hello everybody and welcome back to Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk here on Dork Tales. I'm your Dungeon Master Kelly, bringing the he and him as my pronouns, and uh, happy April 1st, everyone. Uh, we were trolled by some tech difficulties until recently, but we've managed to circumvent them and are now ready to play Fandelver and Below. I'm actually really excited about this session because uh, we get to do some cool stuff. And I think that this is where the module shines because they give you a bunch of different ways to solve problems that are not just hit it with a stick. And I love it when D&D modules do that because the, the hit sticking, stick hitting, hit sticking, stick hitting, that should be there, but optional, you know. You don't want to always beat something up. You, you want to save it as a treat. Uh, but hey, uh, before we start beating things up, uh, let us meet the treats for tonight, starting with Christine. Hello, uh, I am Christine. I use she, her pronouns. And I must admit, in this particular module, I'm talking like Carmilla for some reason, um, I really enjoy hitting stuff with sticks. It's I don't great. know why I started that way. I think it was because I went, hello. Hello. And went from there. Um, but today I get to play Lady Alessandra Celeste Martin Barraquel, uh, which is our ASMR paladin. Fantastic. Next to you, we've got Caitlin. Hello, I'm Caitlin. I use she, her pronouns, and so does Anthea Briarfoot, the halfling artificer alchemist of the group, who is very confused now about when to hit things with sticks and when to not hit things with sticks, when to finish things off with sticks and when to not. And people are just so confusing. It's really true. It's it's a sad, sad state of the world, really. Um, down beneath you, we have the... Uh, I'm not going to say it. You guys saw the intro card. Uh, it's back with a vengeance. It's Amy. Hello, I am Amy. My pronouns are she, her, or they, them. And I'm playing Lyric, the tiefling bard. And oh boy, uh, my apologies for many, many, many delays as I screamed at technology. That's okay. It's my fault. It's probably my fault in the end. Okay. Uh, next to you, we have the indomitable Krista. I don't think I have that feat. Um, at least Krista certainly does it because I'm not on screen because I'm sick again. Woo! Uh, but you're here. Anyway, I'm Krista. I am. I'm trying. I'm doing. I'm, I'm somewhere for sure in the digi space. Um, but uh, hello, I'm Krista. I use uh, she, they, or her them pronouns, and I am playing Carmilla Elazarin, our Dampier battle master fighter. Nice. It's good to have you back, Krista, and it's also great to have Chris back. Hi. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm playing Sindri, our half elven with the Cinder Dragon Monk. I use he or they pronouns, and Sindri's is he or him pronouns. Uh, also, ha happy belated trans day of visibility, which was oh, yesterday. Yeah. So, clap, 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 clap. And Amy, our, like in the session before we started filming today, uh, it was very much like a slice of life anime where you could not see you, but you could hear things going on in the back room. And it just like, I could just imagine like a cloud of cables and lights, boxes and monitors flying around. Yep. And various cats like biting fingers. Very Azamanga Dayo. Mm -hmm. Very that. Mm -hmm. I had All a piece right. of toast in my mouth. It's true, you did. Uh, so yes, uh, very happy Trans Day of Visibility to all of our trans friends, viewers, and and even enemies, because it's good that you're seen. Uh, but reminder that as of today, it is no longer Trans Day of Visibility, which means you once again can have advantage on stealth rolls. Trans rogues have a rough day yesterday. Anyway. Welcome back. Uh, so folks, we're gonna be hopping into game in just one sec. Before we do though, I have to offer a very big thank you to our sponsor for the night, Bookworm Games. Bookworm Games has been propping up Dork Tales for the past year, and it's only fitting that we should tell you to go and enjoy them. With code Dork Tales, you can save 15% off all manner of dice from liquid core to glass to, uh, to gemstone, wood, and more. You can find it at Bookworm Games. You can even get some seasonal teas, which, you know, it's 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 spring now. You might as well relax on your patio with some tea or look at the hellscape that is uh, our modern world while sipping some chocolate mint. Uh, also, a quick note that you right now can go and back the Fungal Familiars backer kit right now that they are doing. Uh, check out the possum. You will not be... Uh, you will definitely not regret it. You're going to love that possum. And uh, it has already been funded, so you don't have to worry about wasting your time with it. Go there, back right now, get some cool enamel pins. Everybody wants them. And... Uh, 
it, it's just going to be great for you to have besides possums. Uh, so um, before we begin, a uh, quick reminder that this morning I posted the greatest actual play of all time on our YouTube. You should go watch it. Um, you will not Oh, and fully funded with several stretch goals. Uh, go check it out. Seriously, go check it out if you like enamel pins. I know, Krista, you're already going to check it out. Everybody's going to check out those pins. Um, they're pretty dope, actually. I was squeeing over that. I, I'm sorry, I'm obsessed with the possum. I also feel like Cat the would be obsessed bunny. with the bunny. Yeah, I kind of yeah. feel like getting the bunny just for Cat. Yeah, you should. She's a little obsessed. Love that. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, they are all awesome. Go back them. Um, so, um, besides that, uh, it's April, folks, which means that we only have a, ooh, a week and a half before Extra Life. So you definitely want to join us for Extra Life on uh, next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, where we raise money for the Children's Miracle Network with 14, that's one and a four, games of fun. Uh, wild, crazy stuff from smuggling birds to playing paranoia. It is going to be awesome and i hope you join us for that um besides that a big thank you to everybody who joined our patreon this week um we saw a big push in april it's fantastic to see more members of the high council join uh and uh seeing some of those level 10 and vip patrons coming in is just it's heartwarming and makes me feel secure in my future so thank you so much for that um <laughs> and with that uh, does anybody have any questions comments or concerns before we hop into game I mean, no more than usual. No more, uh, than, usual. No more than usual. All the right. Questions uh, are more, um, what is it? Existential than anything useful. Ah, I see. I see. Okay. So um, then without further ado, let's head into Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk. Last time on Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk, y'all continue doing your investigations around Fandolin finding that the goblins, the gerblins, were causing more trouble than ever before. Uh, well, maybe less trouble than the poop throwing. That was a lot. Uh, but you discovered that they were on a mission to collect strange black shards from various locations around Fandolin. After tracking some of them to a goblin camp, you beat some information out of them. Uh, you also faced off against some psychic goblins with strange psionic powers that damn near put you in a predicament. You had a rooftop battle and obliterated quite a few of them and uh, learned that the goblins were working out of some strange dwarven place that is connected to the Durgar somehow. And uh, I think that's where we ended game with you all recovering, um, leaving the roof and uh, having, I think Lyric finally met up with you at the end of that. Seeing all of your friends on top of a roof. Being like, what? What's going on here? I think it was uh, very notably off the roof. That's fair. <laughs> so uh, that is where we are going to beginning game right now. <clears throat> the goblins are collapsed all around you from your fight. The rooftop is devoid of all of the coins you were able to pick up, and you've had your discussion with the owner of the sleeping giant. You have a number of different clues that are going to be able to take you to where you need to go next. But for now, what's the plan? I think I needed... Uh, Cinder, uh, Lyric and I met up and we were just having a brief... I was having a brief nap after getting... Oh, that's right. You went back to... Um, you went back uh, to... Uh, you went back to where, where they were hanging out inside of the holding cell. That's right. All right. So, making your way back to the stone hill, you manage to head inside of the door, being met immediately by Tobin, who looks over your direction, sees the amount of disarray that you all are in, and goes, uh, hey, you guys all right? You, uh, you look a little worse for wear. You know, we're okay. I'll give us okay. 
Ethia's going to be thousand yards staring and just kind of pick on a spit. What? I don't think you remember that. I do. Uh, yeah, okay. I was yep. like, oh shit, no one remembers. Okay, cool, cool, cool. What was that? Pick on pick on a spit? He kind of scrunches pick up his... Spit. Uh, she is going to stare past and just walk, walk, walk by. And as you're doing that, there is going to be a little shuffle over by the bar where you see that tattooed dwarf again. She's sitting on a stool talking with uh, with the bartender and um, turns around to a look at you with a little bit of a gleam in her eyes. And she, goes, she pulls down her spectacles and goes, So, what did you find? You were working your way around looking at the investigations, uh, or looking into investigating parts of the town, eh? Oh. You, um, you, uh... We did. I think Alessandra's looking a little stunned. Are you alright? Uh-huh. Alright. Um, sorry I ran off like that earlier. I mean, I mean, I know that I said that we were going to be, be separating places, but, um, if, if you need any help with anything, um, I'm more than happy to try to guide you into uh, wherever you're headed next. Did you find anything else about the Durgar? Did we? I just remember a glowing duck. I feel like I've missed quite a lot. I mean... The glowing duck really sticks in my memory. Yeah. It was really disgusting. I found a skull grenade. How was the duck disgusting? I... Oh. Oh. What? It, there was a glowing rock inside the duck. Yes, wait. And did you take this rock out of yeah, the duck? Yeah, it's right here. And it's Anthea will, I, I think she's the one that had it in a little thing. Okay. I want to see if they're the same. Disgusting pot. And then she'll hold up the vial of the green stuff. Oh, Blood. wow. It's really cool. What? What is that? Toblin says, kind of leaning on the bar. Gross. Like, it fascinating. Is. You found it in a duck's butt? Stomach. Duck's, duck's gut. One letter off. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Can well... I get a beer? Yeah, absolutely, bud. Uh, he's gonna go and, uh, he's gonna pull a, pull a beer for you. Uh, anybody else need a brew? Just change the kegs out. It's a dark today. Oh, yes, please. Uh, Let's do you want to? try it. Sure. Yeah. Oh. All right. Um, uh, for all of you, uh, Lady, Lady L, um, Carmi? <laughs> uh, okay, I'll just pull. I think Alessandro will look over at Carmi. Carmi really doesn't respond because has no idea that they're... Yep. Is he referencing you? Why would they call me that? I don't know. It's the closest to your name. <laughs> Sorry, Why just trying to be friendly. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, if it's supposed to be friendly. All right, Do here you go. Hope not you... respect their friends' names. It's just trying to make oh. it more casual. Um, uh, sorry, this one's got a little, uh, a little too much head. Um. Oh well, if you want to make it more casual, you can call me yep. Ella. Ella, yeah, yeah I, I can absolutely do that. Um. Okay, here you go, Ella. Somebody uh, will do it. <laughs> she has like a little party in the corner. <laughs> Are you okay? Oh, yeah, yes, totally. Very much so. Is Ella like dancing in the corner? I think she does like one like serious kind of like, you know, like the fist in the air, elbow slam down sort of like oh, okay. party move and just kind of like dances a little bit. Is she okay? Yeah, she. Uh, this is good. H happy to help. So, what did you find? The dwarf leans her way over. Um, the one that, if anyone remembers, this is Gwyn Orsong, uh, the uh, the scholar of of plot contrivances. Oh, her. Yeah. 
Sorry, my uh, uh, Thea was thousand yards staring, and my brain just like died for a quick second, <laughs> that's, and I had no idea who we were talking to. Method. And I was like, "We're talking." It's method, method acting. Oh, things and stuff. Um, so this is the rock from the duck's gut, and this is from the goblin's forehead bulgy vein. It was Whoa. green. What? Yeah. I, uh, we got what? some. Yeah. We also found this skull grenade. And along with uh, other things. But that's all that I have. What else did we find? We found a sewage monster in the well. We did See, find a sewage I, monster. Do you remember that? I was there for that. The well? Yeah. How did a sewage monster get down in the well? Oh, well, well, actually, blew up in a tunnel. There's well, a tunnel it's down kind there. Of more like a ca cavern under there, what and it cavern? was like an underground it's river. Tunnel. It's not like it's just a straight dug well. It broke into an open space, is from what I can tell. Oh wow. well, I mean, there's a network of tunnels all the way around here. Fan Fandolin and Fandelver and proper. I, I mean, there's so many mines around here. There's generations of the places. Oh. That's interesting. Does anyone go down there regularly? Uh, I don't. I don't think so. Oh, has anybody mapped it? Yeah. That sounds like it would be very fascinating. Mm, that would be very fascinating. Well, we also found that um, that bar stools make a loud noise when you kick them, but also that. The goblins grabbed a whole bunch of stuff when they were doing their mischief. Like, mostly black rocks, but also the drum of right. the winch from the well. Everybody's lucky rock. Yeah, they were all said to be black rocks. Or I unlucky think. rocks. Or unlucky rocks. Wheel of Fortune said that there was unlucky rock. So strange. I wonder why. Do you, have an, do you have a lucky rock here? Uh, I, I mean, me? Toblin yeah. says. Uh, yeah, Toblin. Uh, <laughs> I mean, no. I mean, like, I guess my wedding ring. It's brought me good luck. That's very cute. That's very cute. I try. Is it shiny and onyx looking i'm gonna roll a d <laughs> a d100 to see if it is uh it is absolutely not it is a uh it is an opal i rolled low enough that it's white <laughs> oh you should be careful the opal might scratch easily i don't know how long you've had it but just oh it's got uh, a low well i mean on the most I, skill. oh that's fair um, uh i've had it skill. for uh uh, how long have I had it for? You're gonna hear it out of the kitchen as um, Trilina looks outside and is like, "So, you don't remember how long you've had our wedding ring, huh?" Oh. I made a really sweet comment just a second ago about how you, 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 yeah, and you think that gets you off everything? And she's gonna head back into the kitchen. <laughs> I'll take the one with the extra head. <laughs> I think you're the only one who's going to be seeing any extra head for a while. <laughs> so, your beers are all on the counter. And um, was there anything else that you found when you were looking around? Um, let's see. Uh, looking for stones. Um, tell you what, if, if you... Oh, well, actually, there was one thing. Oh, I don't know if anyone picked it up though, but there was that, um, there was the, uh, that was a, an axe maybe with dwarven on it or something oh. like that. I, yeah. yeah, you showed me that. Yeah. Well, we did show it to you. You did show right. me that. There was something else we found. Well, that we wanted to show you. There aren't terribly you many. There aren't terribly many, terribly many Durgar around here. Or at least there haven't been for quite a while. I think the most recent mm -hmm. that that Durgars have been around here is there once there was a mining 
uh, a mining settlement um, quite a while ago named uh, uh, Zorzula's, Zorzula's Rest. And it's about a day from here. Can you put it on a map? Uh, not at the Does moment. Yeah. <laughs> there, push down a map. Oh, um, yeah, hold on just one second. Uh, let me see if I can cross-reference my notes. She'll pull out her backpack, which is full of notes like a slightly organized grad student would be. Uh, and, uh, is going to go... Uh, and is going to mark it on the map. It is over by, uh, about, about half a day's journey from, uh, Wave Echo Cave. Well... Do we want to try and see if there's any Durgar kicking around? Oh, we just... Wheel of Fortune! <laughs> and Thea's going to slam her hands down on the thing. What? Soars was here. There was... There was graffiti on the thing. On the... On the bar. That said Soars was here. Oh. Do... <laughs> Is that a Durgar? I don't know. I think that's the only other thing. Well, Zer we Zerzula's Rest is um, is an old mining encampment out that way. Uh, like I said, it's 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 right about here. Zor's? Um, Was that a name for it? Well, I mean, it's short for oh. for Zerzula. Oh, you could just, so oh. maybe maybe it's the same place. If it is, you should probably go out there and see what the goblins are doing. Maybe you could stop whatever their plans are. Like I'm, I'm super down for this. Does this feel like a huge trap to everyone else? Undoubtedly. But okay. Does it? Right? Yeah. Hey, hmm. uh, there's a town that we that name is named Zorzula's Rest. Also, Zorz was here. Like, this could definitely be us trying to be baited away from town so something bad happens. I mean, yeah, there's is a it? chance of that for sure. Um, the goblins so don't them. seem very smart. Jurgar might be. Or someone who hates Durgar. Well, there there haven't been Durgar seen in this area in in quite a while. Uh, if they're there, I, I mean, I imagine that if they're there, something bad has happened. Hmm. I mean, it's like a day and a half, right? A day. That's about a day. Pretty easy trek. I mean, if you like mountain hiking, I kind of do actually. Oh, that reminds me, um, uh, uh, Miss, Miss, um, uh, Miss Anthea, do you like yes. to go for hikes? I mean, uh, uh, yes, I like to find things in nature. I don't really like the physical, um, exertion of, of it, but I do like to go looking for herbs and flowers and berries, though, to use. Oh, in like, like in meadows potions. in the woods. Oh. Yeah, but sometimes you can only find some of them on rocks. So unfortunately, then you have to go there uh, to find them and collect them. I see. Well, um, if I ever look for a chance to go down to nature and go to the mountains, then you know, and you need a companion, I wouldn't mind going with you. Oh, that would be really nice. I think you know a lot more about this area than I do. Great. Um, I would uh, love to show you around if that was a possibility, and then I could help you get your rocks off. I mean, all rocks on. Um, we could get your, we could find something in the rocks. Oh, that sounds nice. Like we, you could, we could Thank go you. and we could, we could go to the mount. I mean, we could mount. I mean, we could go to the mountains. To the mountains. Yeah, I think I'd like that. Thank you. I think you. Carmilla is going to step somewhat between them, and say. I believe we have some Durgar to go find first and sort of shoot her a bit of a glare. Make me an intimidation roll, please. <laughs> She's not meaning to be intimidating. I don't think you have a choice in this. It's <laughs> I mean, valid. I didn't roll great. Um, Actually, give me advantage leave. because she's very skittish. <laughs> uh, it helps to have character sheets open. Eh? Does it? I have literally every other screen open except for my character sheet. That'll do um, it. There we go. Okay. Uh, it's only a 16. Okay, one moment. 
Okay, I'm gonna spend a drama bomb. <laughs> She's going to look at you, and you're going to see that your interference immediately she her her normally like very like tawny skin is going to go a bright burnt red around the cheeks as she kind of goes oh i'm sorry i you're quite imposing she says and you're gonna see the hue darken as she looks at your feet <laughs> and then traces her eyes all the way up to yours demurely what is happening? <laughs> um, I'm wondering the same thing. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm sorry, lady, but if you want, if you ever want to boss me around, you can. Oh, wow. Oh, good. <laughs> We're leaving. <laughs> she turns around and starts walking away. And Thea, let's go. Oh, okay. We'll see you later. And Anthea's going to hop off the bar stool and tunk, tunk, tunk. Oh, we found this too. Boing. I'm just going to hold up the leg that they had found. <laughs> it fell off my belt. I forgot I put it there. Sorry, Sindri, what, what just happened? happened? Hey, is so that Gretchen's much. leg? Yeah. So much oh. is happening. Uh, could you give it back to her, perhaps? Uh, Yeah, I totally can. Oh, thank you. Alessandra's uh, just going to look very confused about everything that's happening around her right now. <laughs> Wait, mm. Carmilla! <laughs> Go chasing Carmilla has had to explain far too many sexual things in the last hour and does not want to explain anymore. Car fair. <laughs> Alessandra is going to chase you regardless. Uh, very fair. Cindy will pay for our drinks and be like, I guess uh, I'll go get my pack. I'll meet you. <laughs> Opens the door. Carmel, where are you going? Are you folks not going to take a nap? I mean, you look, no offense, but I, I, you look like crap. And not just because I saw you getting pelted with it. Oh, I'm leaving now, too. Oh, that's you fair. Know. A nap. Yeah, the nap. But uh, a, a nap on, on the road, I, I guess. Or we can we can wait till tomorrow morning. We can to go. wait till tomorrow morning. I mean, we nice. got the goblins. And listen, I have a couple things to take care of before we go. So how about I meet, uh, meet, meet you all later, uh, tomorrow morning? Sure. All right. Uh, so we will run back up, run upstairs. Okay. So... Lyric turns to Anthea, I think, because I think she's the only one who's still here, possibly, and hasn't completely run off yet. I don't know if Anthea followed me. Uh, no, but Alessandra did. Anthea paused to give the leg back. Yeah. yeah. So Lyric, because Sindri just left, so Anthea is probably about to leave. So Lyric's turning mm. to Anthea and being like, so how about you fill me in on everything that's happened in the last little bit? Come, friend, oh, sit! And is like, okay. hand on shoulder and, like, drags with, well, like... Well, I'm staying with Lady Alessandra. You know what? We can walk you back later. Okay. And we'll uh, proceed to grill uh, Anthea, <laughs> um, if she allows it. Perfect. Oh, sure. So, all right, so you have some grilled halfling. Um, and uh, <laughs> let us cut outside to, uh, to Carmilla is storming off and Lady Alessandra is giving chase. So stepping outside again, what do you guys do? Alessandra didn't think that far ahead. <laughs> I think Carmilla's heading just like, she's just going for a walk and is just going to like loop the town a couple of times. All right. I think Alessandra will catch up then and try and just be like, are you okay? Yes, it's... Uh, sometimes people are so forward and I am very used to people keeping me at a distance and it's not there is a part of that that I want to get over and a part of it I want to be close to people but sometimes people push it a little too fast and especially oh. when people seem to maybe not be taking advantage of Anthea. I'm sure she had lovely intentions, but Anthea is very naive and I feel like I've had to protect her like a little sister. As smart as she is, she is very unknowledgeable about many things and 
That's fair. I don't like seeing her taken advantage of. Aww. Terribly sorry for storming off. It's been a long... Having to listen to every single person in this town with their grievances. I want to help, but when everyone it is so petty, like, do you not have other things to be concerned about? That's fair. It was um very irritating that nobody would let us talk either in the beginning. You all just wanted to shout about nothing without explaining anything. Yes. But they they just they 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 only worry about their own worlds. I think most people do that though. Yes. This is I think that's fairly normal. But it was a little self-aware in the case of like what amounts to an emergency to not explain concisely what the emergency consisted of. Exactly. Oh, do you want to go pet the goat that Lyric found? Or we left with Lyric? We left with Lyric. And the if no. Who found it? And the kittens? Somebody found it. They ended up with the blacksmith, right? <gasps> Baker. The baker. The baker has the kittens. The Do you want to go pet a kitten? They're really cute. Let's go pet the kittens. I have. And she's going to dart off. Been able to just haul oh, Carmilla okay. with her. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to to cut over to the baker where this massive, hulking muscle man uh, with tattoos up and down his arms, lots of scars, dancing over these like deltoids that look like bowling balls is going to be like kneading some dough and you're going to kind of open the door and he's going to kind of look your way. Those of you who have met Henry before, he's going to go, mm. oh, it's you. Welcome. Uh, Hello, Mr. Henry. Can we pet the kittens? Uh, Yeah, that'd probably be helpful. Can you uh, can you give me a hand? Uh, he's wearing an apron and uh, kind of like a, like a sleeveless shirt that's showing off all of his muscles. And as he turns his back to you, you're going to see that he has three of the kittens clinging to his back. Like koalas. Okay. Alessandra will go unhook one, put it in Carmilla's hands, then go unhook another and just ah. kind of attach them to Carmilla for now. Ooh, I oh, think these... Goodness. I think these little tacks like, lost lost their ma a while ago because they're definitely clingers. They're very cute. What do you think, Camilla? Yes, uh, my family mostly had large dogs. These are Look very at this one. tiny. All black. It matches like your clothing. Oh well, yes, they're all oh, goodness. <laughs> She's juggling it like three of them. With you. It matches your aesthetic. <laughs> I yes, I suppose I've never really thought about it, but uh, hello. And tries to like very delicately. She's being so careful, like they're gonna break if she touches them too hard. One of them's going to look up at you and go, "Meow." Now we had dogs too, but we had cats for the outbuildings because otherwise the mice would get in. Here, if you scratch like right here, and she'll like point to like the spots on like the neck and below the ears and under the chin where like most cats like uh carmilla starts to say uh oh see we had the bats for that uh and as the purring starts goes, what sort oh of my bat goodness would eat mice the vampire Alessandra just looks a little like wide-eyed at the idea they would be so big aren't they the size of mice you must uh, be there different. are many there are some that are the size of halflings those ones, funny enough, though, are the least intimidating. They only eat fruit. Oh. Well, how big are the ones that eat mice? Uh, how do about they get the mice? Regular, uh, they're much like owls. They swoop. Oh. And they don't so much eat them as just drink their blood. Oh. Yes. Huh. No, see, we had cats for the barns where the horses were. Because all the hay. That, that makes they sense. They like going climbing in it. Do, do these ones like playing in hay? Probably. They like playing everywhere as far as I can tell. I've had to... Wait, where's the tabby? <laughs> you better not be in the flower bag again! And as he says that, a little white cat is going to round the corner. 
leaving little ghostly white footprints behind it as it powders across the floor. Looking oh, so very... I'm pick it up and go... <laughs> and Lady Alessandra, can you do me a favor and uh, give me an int save? Okay. Uh, that will be... 14. So, looking at this cat, you you blow the the flower off of it and it's going to meow out at you and it's at that point that glancing around you're going to see that there are five kittens inside of your line of sight mm -hmm. and something in your mind is going to just kind of focus on this five kittens five of you there are five croissants right there The number five is very lucky. You start thinking about the investigations. You're about to go on your fifth investigation of the day. Oh. Maybe five is my lucky number. Maybe. But it definitely is going to kind of be fixating in your mind. You're going to be, it's one of those things where whenever, you know, when you hear a word that you are mm -hmm. like, you, it usually happens like you, when you just learn a new fancy word for the first time and then suddenly it's everywhere. And then you say it so much that sounds weird in your head and doesn't feel like a word anymore. And it's like, what is the meaning of anything? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's true. Uh, so with that, the two of you are going to be around your cats. And um, Henry's going to say, look, if you want to take any of them, um, uh, I suppose I could spare a couple. My, my partner's a little bit allergic, but they uh, they like them well enough. I, I don't know if taking baby animals into any kind of battle is a good idea. Maybe, can I leave them with you for now and maybe see if my aunt's dog is all right with kittens before? Because I probably oh, use one. Oh yeah, to help you're talking about. Uh, nice. Oh god, what's that? What's that dog's name? The old hound dog, right? Uh huh. Christine doesn't remember either. So what? Is it Squire. How, it's Squire. How dare you not remember Squire? Minus I 50 XP. Squire once, like five, six episodes ago. <laughs> I was going to say, how many, like, was that two months ago at this point? It got mentioned by a halfling child, like, three months ago. I played that dog for a while. But anyway, um, well, yeah, you can always check back in later, and, and I'm happy to take care of, happy to take care of this, uh, of this brood of cats as long as needed. Wonderful. You're not, you're not putting me out, but. Because I can probably take two later. I also gave your partner some money to take care of the kittens as they were a little concerned at first. What? You, you met Wheel of Fortune? Uh, yes, they work in the bar, yes? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're trying, but I mean, she don't really let them do much work. They seem to be doing better. They made some very delicious drinks for us. Yeah, that's oh, how... Uh... Right. They were really good. We were both at a culinary academy together back in the day, and that's how we met at a mixer that they were working, and I was catering. I and... really don't understand the clam juice or crab juice. What was it? Crab juice? Oh. Crab juice is great, but it has to be used in the right. Uh, if you want, I could. I could. Yeah, that makes a very scrunchy face at him. I could try to make a make a make a crab bake for you. Oh, now that sounds delicious. Yeah, I would put some some bechamel sauce in it, and and probably bake it inside of. Uh, I'd say probably a croissant would give it the best type of flavor. But I also could do like a like a chowder pot pie. So eventually, maybe I would happily buy from you. But in the future, when when eventually we finish like dealing with all this stuff, I will need to settle down. Probably, um, I don't know how to cook. No. Oh. Um, well, I mean, I did go to Neverwinter Culinary Academy. Could I potentially, well, like, the Academy of Arts, it was the NCAA. Well, 
when eventually we stop adventuring and finishing, like, dealing with all of what's been going on, could I pay you for lessons? My lady, you may pay me as much as you want. Excellent. Thank you. And as that transpires, let's cut over to Sindri. Sindri, you go and grab your bags, and where are you headed? Uh, Sindri will uh, try and remember if there's a back way out of the inn where so he doesn't have to go through the... You have slow fall, and there's a window. As much as I am keen to avoid this dwarf again, uh, I'm not jump out the window in town. There is a back door. Hmm. hmm. Like, hmm. Sentry does spend a minute looking out the window debating, like this, like the social norms of jumping out the window just to avoid this. And then he'll be like, no, 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 no. And then jump out the window. <laughs> okay, well. Uh, and then walk in through the front and uh, kind of saddle up beside Anthea and Lyric. So, um, before, um, I need to go sleep for a day or a night. Can we leave in the, the morning when we have, like, have a full day of daylight to travel? Sure. I think that's a great idea. All right. I'll meet you here in tomorrow morning at, at, at daybreak, at daybreak. Oh, wait, 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 before you yeah. go. Yeah. Help me tell Lyric what happened. Okay. Okay. Where where were you? Well, she had just left. Uh, right after we saved the kittens, and then we gave her the bag of kittens, and then she left with them. Right. Uh huh. So from there, we went to go help at the line. Was it Lion Star Coaster we helped out at? It was. Uh, no, it was the Miners uh, Exchange. What? The Miners Exchange. There we go. Uh, the whole house was tilted yes. at an angle because someone it was. took out someone took out okay. one of the base building rocks of it. Oh. Uh, one yes. of the, one of those black shiny stones. It was a lucky rock again. Yeah. Possibly the cornerstone of the building. Mm. Mm -hmm. Great. Yes. Okay. So okay. then. And then and then, Sindri helped and. Uh, put the rocks back because I showed them where to put them. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's uh -huh. twice in a day. We're getting really good at this. Yes. Good. I don't want to make a habit of it, though. Yes. Uh, and then uh, we tracked down the goblins to find uh, where the thunderstorm went, right? Yes, correct. We found them in the forest and they had a camp and they... <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading the chat. And then... We snuck up on them through the forest, me and Sindri, mm -hmm. and then we okay. made some very, very smart remarks, and we pounced on them, and we beat them up good. Yeah. And then we took their stuff, but the rock wasn't there, because it was already taken to what they called the Smelly Dwarf Place. A Smelly Dwarf Place? Yes. Possibly this Zorzula's Rest, is that what we're thinking? That's a kind of our only lead. Or where Gundrum puts his laundry. Also possible. Okay. Uh, unlikely. Yes. And then... Yes. the Sleeping Dragon in. Giant, okay. but yes. Giant shit. It's like Craigmont Castle all over again. It is. But that's okay. But, th <laughs> <laughs> but that's not relevant right now. We're, we're, we're... Giant? Yeah. Yeah, uh, so where the Red Brands used to hang out. They right. got, like, ransacked, too, and they got part of their bar smashed, and there was the, um, their lucky stone, they called it, but Wheel of Fortune, one of the bartenders there, was like, the oh, stones the never brought me any luck. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're tiefling. That makes a lot more sense. I, really? Yeah, yeah, they're really quite nice. They make and a nice drink. They do. Good. Okay. Beat some goblins up on the roof. Uh huh. Because there was a trail of the um, the not treasure. I don't know. Because the goblins are oh. funny that way. But they had the cash box that was ding 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 ding. 
it had coins coming from it, and we followed the trail. And Sindri did that all the way to the roof. And then we <laughs> fought them on the roof. And one of them almost got away. But it didn't. And that's how we ended up uh -huh. here. Uh-huh. And we right. returned the, and return the coin box. And then Correct. Sindri came to find me. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I think I'm caught up now. Thank you for that. Good. I um, absolutely still have questions, but for now, I think that's that's fine. <laughs> Chris hey, and Cindy. And that's what you missed on Glee. Um, yeah. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Um, anyway, we found all these cool stuff and the goblin camp out in the forest. Do we want horses? Um, I think that would be good. I don't really want to go by foot for a day and a half. Oh, yes, we want horses. Okay, so I'll arrange for us. I'll see if we can rent horses again. Um, yeah, I mean... Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, I'll leave that to you. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the mayor would just give us horses because we've been doing so much work for him. Just like to borrow, you know? Yeah, I'll go ask. It doesn't hurt. Thanks, it's, Cindy. It's, it's for the good of the town. Mm, truly. You're, you're very persuasive. You can remind him that we are, um, have been acting as agents of the town. Yes. Uh, really. Transportation should be included, and if it's not, then they should pay a stipend for it. Truly. Oh! I mean, it sounds much better than consultants. Yeah, yeah no. We don't want to no. consultants. No. Ew. No, uh, I don't think we're very much consultants because we're kind of more physically active. Yeah, we're contractors. Then I heard you—you uh, yeah. you were going by the name Guiding Lights. Toblin says and slides uh... across some new beers to you. I don't think we chose uh, that one specifically. I believe that was just sort of a general title. Ah, okay. The other one was the Guidance Counselors. Guiding Lights. No, Guiding I don't like that better. one. Um, Guiding Lights is better. Mm, I think that was kind of just the mayor just decided that it was like a spur of yeah. the moment in a panic thing. But you know, it does work mm. in terms of just speaking of us as a collective, so I don't see a reason to contend it. Fair. I've been called worse. Fair. Um, hey, um, so uh, I heard you guys over, I was trying trying not to listen, but I overheard you talking about settling up and things like that. Don't worry about it. Like your your money is... I mean, it's still good here, don't get me wrong, but like, you're not going anywhere. So um, you've already put a deposit down and everything, so don't stress about it. And um, uh, so I, I also, uh, I talked to the Mrs. and Thea, and because you were so passionate about it, uh, we did pull a, uh, a spare pig out of uh, the smokehouse. So we do have pig on a spit tonight for you. Oh. You said you wanted something spit roasted, right? Oh dear. Oh, well, in sorry. that case, I'll make I'll make sure to come back for it. Sure. Uh, are, did I read that wrong? Are you are you halfling kosher or? I I don't know what's happening here. Oh, Carmilla's gonna be so. I think I just need this. a moment. <laughs> and uh, on that, I think that is a great place. Carmilla is so happy she missed this. <laughs> it's a great time for us to do two things. Uh, the first is a, a, is time for us to take a quick break. Uh, but while we're doing that, now that you have your mission, why don't we uh, hit level six? Oh, shit. Ooh, yeah. All right. Hell yeah. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. Level six, level six, level six. Let's upgrade. Let's roll hit points real quick and then we'll take a break. Okay. Boop. Do, 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 do. Four. All right. Four, four, and Thea. Yeah. Level six. Level six. Oh, finally, more than a half the hit points. I got seven, finally. Yay! Yes. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, it's better than having 32 hit points at level five. It's bad. Oh, my. Yeah. Better. I rolled a one three times in a row. <laughs> yeah. And for those oh, wondering, I don't allow I ones. I don't allow ones on uh, on stat rolls because that's Thankfully, the worst. 
I almost had a two, but it was cocked. I Thank rolled you. a four, so I have six hit points. Six I hit points. Six, so I get plus eight. Oh. Six. Perfect. All right. So, um, and then after the break, we will be hopping back in as level six characters. Hey, folks, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the qu this quick word from uh, our, our our break. It's it's really not super special. Uh, but see you in a minute. Why, hello, everyone. Welcome back to Fandelver and Below. This is the part of the program where we briefly talk to the chat. Hey, buddies. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. Uh, a couple of things before we chat with you. Uh, one, if you have not watched the uh, special April Fool's episode uh, on our YouTube, you probably should because it took a lot of work and I really appreciate it. And I'm so annoyed I can still see one editing glitch in it. <laughs> That's how I am forever. People are like, oh, it's great. And I'm like, I see this one half second flaw. And I hate that on YouTube, you used to be able to like upload fixed files and adjusted files. And then they took that away when people started abusing it to do awful things. But I would really like to just be able to, you know, occasionally upload a new copy of something with like an audio glitch removed or something. Uh, but the other thing that I want you to go and do is, uh, did you know that the nominations for the Crit Awards are up? right now. Uh, it is for the previous calendar year up through, uh, I think, mm, the end of February this year. So if there is a Dork Tales thing that you loved, uh, please go and uh, nominate us for some stuff. You can also go into the Discord and you could like do like a, a grassroots campaign to flood them with the same answers, which probably will help. At least definitely list us as your favorite legacy channel. Do it. Do it. We'll do it. All right. Uh, so besides that, I'm sorry that Christine, I'm sorry that you uh, hurt your back. Krista, I'm sorry that you're feeling herky. Uh, for the Crit Awards, uh, it is a online, it's a basically a role-playing award show uh, that's ran by our friend uh, Ivy, the Game Raider girl. Um, and uh, I think also their partner at Dice Cream Sandwich does a bunch of things involving it too but i think i think ivy is the primary person for it um so yeah they're they're real cool bean so go check them out and uh, i'd love to get nominated for something this year last year christine got nominated for best player in a um, in, in a non D D game i think was the category yeah i'm pretty sure it was for my mage yeah i think evelyn needs Rainer. to be nominated again evelyn needs to sweep it again well it needs to yeah. sweep it this time because evelyn is is grotesque and amazing I love her. She's great. She's great. She's one of your best characters, like top 10. Oh, thank you. But yeah, uh, besides that, how's everybody else doing? Like, I know that we're all, it has been a hell of a weekend. We didn't stream at all this weekend and everybody came back sick and exhausted. I know that, uh, like, I got a call from Frecklebites today and they blew out their voice at SoccerCon over the weekend. Everybody's just having a time. I thought you said soccer con for a second. I'm like, soccer con. Okay, soccer convention, probably not right. Shaka con, not relevant, but but amazing. But I can't. I've I've now entered free association stage of the evening. Free association, bingo. Less useful as a player. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like we'll just keep workshopping the bits until they work. That's true. There are other dubs you can nominate if you are <laughs> were hoping to do so. It's just that well, that Ev Evelyn's wild and crazy. I am hoping that I am not catching COVID again because mm. I found out after we had Easter dinner on Friday night that my brother's girlfriend tested positive today. Mm. 
And I'm like, great. Well, <laughs> She's lovely. Ooh. But I was sitting next to her. I'm glad I wasn't at that too. dinner. Just no. dodge. Just... I mean, I'm probably not going to get it because we just got over COVID not that long ago. Yep. So I'm probably full up on antibodies. But fingers crossed because now I am paranoid about every single sniffle. And my nose is not great this time of the year to begin with. This is true. This is true. Um, and other fun things that happened. So this week uh, I did a bunch of world building for Elos. Uh, oh, hey, don't forget, if you are free on Wednesday afternoon, World Building Wednesday is going to be right here on Dork Tales Twitch. Uh, if you're watching it on Twitch, if you're watching it on YouTube, come come over to Twitch. It's totally fine. Um, also, uh, if you guys are interested over on our Patreon, I know everybody just blanks out when I say Patreon, but uh, we have a poll right now that even free members can take part in to know uh, what type of bonus content we're going to be producing this year uh right now a mage the ascension 1999 game is just sweeping it uh with like one out of ten votes is going to that and there's like 30 options so it's like it's a lot um followed by a bunch of other really great stuff including potentially having uh water deep dragon heist which uh i'm very excited uh about doing later this year if we can manage it probably after avernus or into the beginning of next year uh, but i'm very excited um, because I, I might get a play in that and I already have my character and they're very cute and I'm excited. Dragon heist, dragon heist. We're going to heist some dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Amy's face. <laughs> I make, it makes me want to laugh like Scooby-Doo. <laughs> me? That's a Robin <laughs> laugh. All right, so um, what else is going on? Anyway, that's that's basically it, folks. Thank you so much for for tuning in and for joining, uh, enjoying uh, Dork Tales content, and for joining us for another episode of Bend Over and Below. Uh, we're gonna hop back into game in just a sec. Uh, tonight's session might be a little bit shorter just because we do have several people who are broken uh, and I don't want to tax them too much, but we're going to get to a really good place because Zorzula's Rest is a really cool part of the module uh, and I'm excited to get into it. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, oh, also, the last thing I wanted to say is that uh, I have to have a meeting with Bookworm soon because we're going to start having Dorktales dice from the sound of it. So actual Dorktales dice, like real Dorktales dice. Uh, I'm not sure how we're going to do them, if we're going to have Elos dice or just like the word Dorktales or something, uh, but uh, we'll figure it out. I do have the Elos symbol now, so that's going to be pretty dope if I throw that in. Uh, some Elos dice for... Uh, oh, and um, I finally did a bunch of work this weekend on figuring out what is happening in our homebrew area uh, of Awari, the kind of um, the more... I would say like Asiatic inspired place. Um, it's definitely much more its own thing now. I'm super hyped about that. And uh, Amy, I have an idea that is basically Jujutsu Kaisen and Persona 3 for a campaign. So I know oh, that you're going to no. be in that when the time is right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, we also have a bunch more surprises, but uh, I'm going to tell you that very soon. Um... <laughs> But not today, because we got to confirm whether or not we're attending something or not. So, um, yeah. So, everybody, you're amazing. I hope you had an amazing uh, first three months of the year. And you have an amazing spring going forward, because you are awesome. Um, and besides that, uh, I think I'm ready to head back in, level six heroes. Are you ready to head back in? I think so. I am, now that I learned that I had a class feature for a full level that I didn't remember. So that was that's wondering. cool. I was wondering why you weren't stunning everybody. You're just already stunning, Chris. I, th I thought you were on level six. I'm like, okay, well, I'll just do it at level six then. Doop, doop, doop. <laughs> derp, 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 derp. <laughs> so good. That, that power I'm spike that everyone gets. Level six feature. What do you get I'm at your level six? To my saving throw bonus. <laughs> I get um, song of animating performance. Nice. So I can right. bring uh, inanimate objects to life to fight for me. That's at level six. That is awesome. the best spell that exists. <laughs> Holy because crap. all of those animated things are incredible. So Their Amy, stats are insane. It's so OP. Um, if we are ever in a situation where you want to use that, feel free to ask me um, what else is in this room. 
because the things I might not might describe yeah. might not be in the room. Like if you're like, hey, I'm going to bring this to life or I'm looking for a chair. I might not yeah. list every chair when you enter a room. There might just be a chair in the corner. And if I have something good happens, there will be a chair in the corner or whatever you want to animate. Unless it's a credenza, credenzas are special. They only go in the front entryway, so you can leave your keys on them. That's Unless chair I... in the corner. That's chair in the spot. Spotlight. <laughs> losing your initiative. Trying to bring about some doom. Oh, Chris yeah, is Yeah, it uses the dancing item stat block. Which uses my proficiency bonus. Yeah, a large or smaller non-magical item within 30 feet of me that isn't being worn or carried. So you, so it's a small item that you get? Large or smaller. Okay. Uh, so let me know and I can so put those on the field the when you're casting it. Yay. I'm excited. All right. So uh, without further ado, I think it's time for us to head back into Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk, here on Dork Tales. Hello and welcome back to Vandelver and Below. You spend the night recuperating, gaining all of your hit points back, getting a nice solid rest. Is there anything that y'all are doing on the way to Zerzula's rest? Or shall we just jump ahead? Were we uh, able to procure horses? You were able yeah. to procure some horses, yeah. You're able to borrow some with a, well, I, I, I suppose if you are going to be making it out, what is his voice like? Hold on. Oh, hello, friends. I suppose if you're going to be making a gig out there to go investigate this, I could make sure that you have some horses lent to you. Uh, make me a persuasion roll to see how good these horses are. Haha. -ha. Fortunately, I have that thing from Way of the Ascendant Dragon that lets me re-roll if I fail a check. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's called Draconic Presence, because uh, I rolled a four. Okay. And then I rolled a 17, so that's, or 18, so. All right, so you managed to get the exact same horses that you got last time and are able to easily ride off into the night. Well, into the day. I'm assuming that you're all going to want to take a, a camp somewhere because it takes about a full day to get there or about a half day if you're riding at a decent clip. You could go straight to Zerzula's rest or you could take a rest and head in after you have one had one more night of rest. I don't know if we like. Well, I'll, well, let's not, let's talk about this because I don't really think we need to spend more time. Like, okay. I don't. We don't know. I don't know how big it is. Like, what do you think, everyone? Well, I think I'm ready to go. I already made these. Kuchunk. <laughs> Anthea's gonna um, had made some new infusions, which uh, Krista, your uh, returning hand. At, Hand axe mm -hmm. is oh no longer. God, I forgot that was a thing. A thing. That's okay. It's no longer a thing. So when you remember cool. and try it, it's it's not. She's she's not coming back. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Put a string on it. <laughs> Hand axe, you do come back. Uh Yeah, I can see in the dark with these, so that's pretty cool. Nice. And Nice. My 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 light crossbow is just better. Yeah, I think like Alessandra will encourage for a rest. Like if we're riding basically all day to get there, she's going to encourage that. Let, let's just camp a little ways out and then we'll go in fresh first thing in the morning. Instead of entering the camp, the place as like night falls. OK, I'm in. Makes sense okay. to me. That sounds good. I can have tea time. Nice and easy evening. You manage to make it into the mountains. You find a great place to camp. Zerzula's rest, if it is very far from where it was marked by Gwen on the map, shouldn't take you more than about an hour to get to the next day. You find yourself in a little copse of trees on kind of um, on a sheltered mountaintop on one of the uh, the various plateaus in the mountain range. The fire is crackling ahead of you. Now I need to know, who is taking first watch? Sure. Lyric okay. will. She will make sure that her to drink some of her bottle of endless coffee or whatever it was called that she picked yep, up. Yep, the decanter room. of endless coffee. Yep, yep, yep. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, Crucial. absolutely. Yeah. And Theo okay. will, will do first watch with Lyric, and okay. we can share tea time. <laughs> or <Yes>. coffee time. <laughs> So you have some some wondrous coffee and tea. Is there anything that you both are talking about? I'm probably leafing through a plants book to see if there's anything to keep things fresh in my mind so that I can, you know, okay. pick some stuff if I find anything you're... cool. So, Anthea, you're mm. quite smart. Generally. Well, thank you. Um, generally. Yes. I... How familiar are you with legal um, contracts and the likes? Um, so I wouldn't say I'm too familiar with like procedures. However, I am able to read things quite well. And so I can kind of see where they're going with things. Um, but if there's any procedures behind the scenes, I'm not really quite sure. But uh, I'd perhaps. never skim over paragraphs like some people might. So perhaps any loopholes might pop out? Yeah, potentially, if there's maybe something that they didn't account for. But if it's anything that's really specifically a law okay. loophole, uh, no. But, well, uh... Do you think you could do me a favor and take a look uh-huh. at this? And Lyric is pulling out her contract oh. that she got from the demon. Or was it a devil? It was a devil. It was a female. It was a devil. Devil, yeah. The contract to with Glacia, et cetera, et cetera. And is just like unpulling out this this rolled up scroll and just like hands it to Anthea. Wow, it so just keeps going. Keep this between us. I, Part um, of it will unroll into the fire. It. Oh. oh no. Uh oh. Um Lyric goes to grab that and we'll try and stamp out. Sure. Uh, can both of you just make me a quick perception roll? Yeah. I can do that. I can try. Wee! I got a net 20. Because well, I got a net 1, but guess what? I'm a halfling. Oh, <laughs> perfect. That's a 17. 17. Both die. of you are going to watch it roll out. It bounces off a rock and then rolls and continues to over roll into the fire and beyond it. And as you freak Ooh. out, you rush over and... As you go to stamp it out, Lyric, you're going to see that it's not on fire. Oh, well, that makes sense. Oh, she's pristine. Well, that's good. And as you look at it, the fire is able to... Basically, you're seeing through the skin of the parchment there. God, you hope it's not actually skin. But the actual paper becomes translucent, like when you hold a candle up to a piece of paper. And that's when you notice with that nat 20, there are words on the contract that you don't remember seeing. Okay, so the fire reveals the small print, I suppose. Well, let's figure out the fine print. Whoop! Yeah. Fire print, I guess, in this case. Okay, sure. I suppose this will keep us occupied for the next couple of hours until the next watch. Oh, intriguing. You know what? I'm very happy that you're happy. I am, actually. Thank you. Okay. Into the fire. And I guess we will scan through it and try and figure out what exactly is in this that I've yeah. somehow agreed to. <laughs> All right. So, um... Can you please make me an intelligence roll, please? I will allow you to use religion for this. Both of us? Both of you can, yes. Yeah, let's go. Uh, if religion could, would history or arcana be suitable? Mm, or I'm going to say that? religion because this is specifically devilish legalese. Okay, cool. <laughs> That but like your uh, <laughs> your jack of all trades will apply. I got a thirteen. Thirteen? Yeah, um, just eight. just intelli- intelligence. Sixteen for me. Yes. Okay. So as you are looking at this, you are going to see 
that the fire reveals text in blood that says something like the following. Whereas it is acknowledged that the undersigned party, here and referred to as the recipient, possesses the lineage of ancestral descent, being bearing significant infernal heritage, hereafter referred to as inherited in blood, and whereas it is understood that the nature of said inherited in blood holds paramount importance in the execution of this contract. Now, therefore, in consideration of the aforementioned premises, the parties hereto agree as follows. The recipient hereby agrees and affirms that their inherited blood shall serve as an indispensable component of the contractual relationship established therein. The recipient warns and represents that they possess full legal capacity to engage in the present agreement and the revelation and utilization of their inherited blood in accordance with this contract do not contravene any applicable laws or regulations. The undersigned demonic entity, a devilish entity it should say, uh, hereafter referred to as the contractor, acknowledges and agrees that the recipient's inherited blood as a binding element of this contract entitling the contractor to rights and privileges specified therein. The recipient further agrees that any breach of the terms outlined herein may result in the forfeiture of their inherited blood to the contractor with all ensuing consequences as deemed appropriate by infernal law. This contract will remain valid and enforceable for the duration of the stipulation therein, subject to termination or modification solely by written mutual consent of the parties hereto. In witness hereof, all parties have executed this agreement of the date first written above as per the moment uh, that the infernal blood arrived on uh, Toril. You're pretty bound to it. I see that. I don't entirely understand why or what benefit they get. Um. As you're hmm. looking at this, though, with a you got a seventeen. I believe I said a sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah, sixteen. You keep looking at the repetition of infernal blood. Like I know I'm a tiefling. What's the point? Infernal blood. At one point in that, though. There's a word that strikes you as a bit odd. Inheritor. And for some reason, that lodges in your mind. I'm not sure what I'm inheriting here. The you blood. Well, obviously. I don't know. I what think that's about? all it's really saying. It's just, just saying, saying a yeah, lot of inherited blood. blood. And that you're bound to it. Both of you may yeah. make me an insight roll if you'd like. Okay. Hopefully it's better. <gasps> oh boy. Oh boy. Um, That's a six. Oh, six. I rolled worse, but I think I have a plus nat. I No, plus six. So that's a 12. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, looking at this, it's it was so legally written that it's making your eyes cross. I think I'm too tired for this. Just gonna hurriedly sip her tea. Um, Lyric, as you refill, and I need to know, do you take it black or do you put things in it? Uh, I think in this case, she's just drinking it black straight up. Okay. Uh, so, Anthea, you obviously take it with a bit of sugar, right? I do, and a little bit of milk too. Um, looking around, you have, I'm spending a hurt the more for this, you have left your sugar back at Alessandra's. Oh, no. I don't think there's any plants around here that are super sweet either. You do bring your own, though, um, uh, Lyric. I mean, you could have some I don't have any here. sugar. You have sugar? Oh, yeah, just that's sort of nice. Travel there and all that. Never know when you need it. Can I use some? Well, of course, here. Yeah. Oh, thank all right. you. Lyric, it's you not reach. Cutie like my sugar, but you reach into your pouch that you keep all of your coffee supplies. Uh, it is it is perfect. Like you you drink so much coffee that you have like your specific setup. Nothing ever goes in there except for that, which is very alarming. And you reach in and pull out a jar of toes. Oh. That doesn't look like sugar. No, it does not. Didn't you have the jar of toes? Why do I have it? Oh, I what don't think I had the jar of toes. Remember? 
No. Oh. I thought you fed it to Squish. Oh, so I always say that Squish is eating it because it kind of sounds cuter, but then that's kind of a little disturbing. But he actually just kind of dissolves it and acts like a garbage disposal. Right, so why do I have a jar of toes in my oh, coffee know. bag? And, uh, Maybe whatever eat, Squish dissolves ends up in there? Okay, Can I get strange. you both to do me a favor? Yeah. Can you both make me a wisdom save? <laughs> uh, with the different dice, yeah, let's go. You know what? I'm going to spend my determination on this. Sounds <laughs> good. Preemptively? Yeah. Oh, I rolled gonna... a 17! Ooh, nice. Sorry. That's going to make it a dirty 20. Dirty uh, 22. Dirty, dirty 20 as well. Perfect. Um, as you are looking over the contract and you see the the toes um you are going to hear a branch snap behind you and suddenly there is a tall looming sensuous red skinned devil standing between the two of you she looks down from from uh from her very, very tall height of about six and a half to seven feet tall. She's dressed in flowing robes that accentuate the naked curves of her body underneath in a scandalous way, spreads her wings across the clearing and goes, Really now? I just told you not to share that information, Lyric. Good evening. Hello. To be fair, it's been a few days. And I completely forgot about that part. You're very pretty. <sighs> I'm sorry, but I have to do this according to my job. She bites her thumb I... and smears a drop of blood like on both of your foreheads. Oh. Okay. There, consider yourselves cursed. Oh with what? Wait. Is it the toes? What? Is that the curse? No, I didn't bring it. Are you any... our toes? Our toes. You should be well, cursed. And she flicks some blood at you both. No. You should. You should be cursed. Cursed. Oh. No. What are you... Okay, that's very gross. Wiping the blood off. Um. What All are right. you supposed to be feeling? Cursed, you... apparently. I mean, I do feel a little bit cursed, but I don't think... Did you... Cursed. Wait. Are you serious? You're hiring her as your legal representative? Yes. She's very intelligent. Well, for fuck's sake. Fine. Well... Well, no wonder the curse didn't take effect. It's supposed to curse anyone that you disclose this to, but she doesn't count as a foreign party then. Well, that's good. Good. I was going to curse you so that you failed everything you tried to do. Oh, that's so mean. It's in the contract. I already warned Lyric about it. Yes, and I have a regular person, mortal individual's memory, and I forgot about that because you woke me up with it. Well, I don't to know. be Things fair, I emergency. tried to put you to sleep with it as well. She cocks a hip up. Mm, it would have been nice to go back to sleep. Instead, we had to go deal with some people who had broken out from prison. And then we went on a trip. And uh, what was my mind? This is the first time I've really looked at it. Fine. So, this is Anthea Briarfoot. I'm Colrath. Infernal Affairs. I'd say it's nice to meet you, but you just tried to curse me. Technically, Lyric tried to curse you. It oh. was a subclause in the contract that she signed. Oh, I see. Remember signing? And that's sort of why I needed the help to figure out what I agreed to. I did read it before. I do warn you. Warning. By dragging Ms. Briarfoot into this, she now is your official legal counsel. Oh. Okay. I'll have to study up, I suppose. 
Yes, especially if you don't want to serve a consecutive term in hell along with your client. Oh, not particularly. Sorry, Lyric. Mm, that's Actually, okay. and she will like lean forward and smile, and there will be like a a flame, and suddenly she's halfling sized. Oh, and quite oh, ador that's cool. adorable. Oh. And she like leans in. How are you with yeah. infernal machinery? Uh, I don't think I've ever tinkered with infernal machinery before. We're always hiring. There's a great signing oh. bonus. Hmm. I have to think about it. We're on a mission right now, though, so... Mm-hmm. Well... Try not to bring any more people into this. I understood. Understood. Um. Your contractor will be very upset if you do. Just so about that. We found this pot here. And it says something about inheritor. I'm not sure what I'm in. What that has to do with anything here. Make if me a I'm persuasion roll. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. So, to persuade. I'm not so great on the persuasion front. Okay. Uh, but that will be a 15. A 15? She'll look over at you. I could tell you, but I need a bit more. I need something a bit more than just a pretty please. With a uh, sugar on top? <gasps> oh, I don't think I ever got the sugar. And no, I found the toes. Do I uh, have any sugar? Lyric starts pulling out, looking to see if the sugar even is there. There is sugar. There. It's beneath the toes. <laughs> I found the sugar. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, would you like a cup of coffee? Also tea, if you prefer. I don't know what uh demons take. Devils take? Devil. Do I look like a demon to Devil. you? Oh, um, really I haven't studied any of this very much, so I'm really not sure, and I didn't mean to offend Colrath. Let me just say that if I was a blood-slathering brute with 16 heads and a prehensile appendage between my legs, I might be a demon. But right now, oh. I am a suave, sophisticated devil. Oh, okay. I'll make note of that. Thank you. Do you have any peppermint? Oh, yeah, actually. A cup of tea would be lovely. Okay. I did come all this way. Um, yes, not the toes, please. Oh, no. Deal with those for something else, I think. Yeah, mm. that would mess up the peppermint flavor. Yes, mm. it would. I'm wondering, though. Mm? You don't appear to have much legal knowledge. If I were... She says, uh, you hand her the cup of tea and she sips it. Just kind of mm -hmm. making idle chit-chat with you. <laughs> you were raised by your father, Lyric? Yes. Hmm. If I was inheriting something, I'd want to know from whom. Well, I figured it was from my mother. My father doesn't have anything worth inheriting like this. Oh. That's the whole part about infernal blood sort of indicates. Mm -hmm. You never seem to indicate who my mother was. So that's so odd. Thank you for the tea. Dropped me off one morning. 
You're welcome. Now be sure to study up. Unfortunately, we're going away from the town right now, but mm -hmm. we'll be back soon. And I can always try Neverwinter. Hmm. I think you have something that you need to look for, then. Hmm? I think you have something that you need to look for, then. If you have a question needing answer, but... I would just say that there are grand plans in the future for you, Lyric. That's both optimistic and very terrifying, I will admit. <laughs> just how I like it. Ta-ta! A swirl oh, of flame, hi. and she is gone. The teacup daintily seemed... sat on the log next to you. Oh, that's I nice. Don't... It didn't even break. She seems like the type that I would very much appreciate to meet in a situation that was not this. Mm, like, I, agree. I would like to just get to know her and just talk. I think she's led a very mm. interesting life. She'd have many interesting stories to tell. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, well. That's okay, Lyric. She's gonna clasp one of your hands with both of her hands. Try to get both of your hands in, but it's, like, not working very well. Uh, we'll figure this out together. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Really. Thank you. And I'm sorry I brought you into this um, uh, a little bit. That's okay. I mean, I, I'm not that sorry because I could use the help, but I am sorry about the whole potentially being stuck in hell if things go poorly uh, I mean I don't know hell's probably got some pretty interesting plants in it possibly I'm not really mm -hmm. sure what the different layers have circles layers wow mm -hmm. right there's different circles they'll have all different plants oh. and as you're saying huh. this there's going to be a brief rustle behind you and Alessandra oh. and Carmilla if she's getting up as well are going to look out and see Anthea and Lyric clasping hands by the fire <laughs> talking about rings <laughs> maybe we should just back up and leave them to it I'm so confused I normally catch things and Anthea doesn't I'm just going to go ask. Are you ready to trade off? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm really tired. There's a lot of conversation there. It looks like. Lots of thinking. Um, okay. Well, thank you. I hope you had a good rest and a good watch ahead of you. Uh-huh. She's Carmilla is definitely looking at Lyric uh, because she knows that Anthea won't get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely like making eyes as like you 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 see what's happening, like kind of looking at you, looking at hands, looking at you. <clears throat> oh, can I have my hand back, Anthea? Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I'll start cleaning up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, she's gonna clean up everything. I'm gonna put that away. Oh yes, sorry. Let's just put it over here to get it out of the way. There you go. And as you are tidying up, Alessandra. Uh huh. You pick this clearing, or the clearing was picked for you by one of the others. It's odd. There are five tree stumps in the center which you built the fire around, convenient. And as you're standing there, you're counting in your head. Almost every sentence that Lyric and Anthea just said was five words long. It was, I counted. Oh my god. <laughs> I'll just clean stuff up. Can I have my, uh, give me my hand back? Things like that. The repetition is starting to annoy you. She's getting very confused with this, too. She's like, why am I noticing this? <laughs> Are you okay, Lady Alessandra? She's gonna... Nadia's gonna pop up and put a hand on your forehead. Are you okay, Lady Alessandra? Five words. I was literally sitting here counting too. <laughs> like, wait a minute. 
Wait a minute. I'm good. <laughs> She's gonna go determinedly sit and look out at the clearing. Uh, All right. I think. Okay I'll then. Go we should to sleep. Bed. Did we ever determine if Sindri actually sleeps? Because it's been back and forth being a half elf. I don't think we've ever really determined he sleeps when it's convenient. No, uh, I do. Sindri does sleep. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Only elves fully sleep. It's the European uh, right. half elves that sleep. Yeah, yeah according to lore. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, like, he sleeps as much as a college kid does. So, like, either a lot or none. Fair. And or... he certainly snores. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be the worst to uh, just trance and snore? <laughs> terrifying the, the biggest mood yeah um is are how many watches are we doing is it just the two or is it three you can probably do three? two yeah okay. or you can do three if you want well i just want if 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 we're only doing two i don't know if Sindri's getting up or if cindy Sindri gets the whole night to sleep which is fine mm -hmm. but it's It'd be pretty just, funny if, if i was like well i don't really think we need to do this Oh, we're doing it? Well, I'll just go to sleep then. No, no. Sindri would probably get up and, like, help out. Yeah. All right. So you have uh, a pretty nice night, but Carmilla, as you and Lady Alexander are stoking the fireplace, can I get you to do me a favor? Can you make me mm -hmm. a charisma save, please? Oh, a save. Ooh. Mm hmm uh, oh, nope, that's not terrible. Sorry, was that both of us? Nope, just just Carmilla. How close is Carmilla to me? I just added plus one. Ooh. Oh. What'd you get? If we're both sitting by the fire with You're Carmilla both sitting within 10, 10 feet, feet of me. Probably. You're within, oh yeah, you are within 10 feet of her. Add plus three. Oh, hell yeah. In that case, it is a 19. So as you are sitting around the fire, you're sitting pretty close by and watching the fireplace crackle. Elisander might be stalking it with extra logs or just kind of stoking it with a stick. But as you are looking at it, your mind is going to wander back, back to home. You see the fire dancing in front of you as she stokes it. And you can't help but think of the last time well the last time you saw such a fire back home your uncle was standing by you pale hunched leering over a young man the fire was crackling and blackening the young man's belly as he was bound by his arms and legs above it. You can see, Carmilla, he whispered in your ear. Watch, look out into the crowd. You know this man. He was a servant at your house. Not quite a butler, but on his way to becoming one. He was a servant, a cleaner, a chauffeur, an everyman. But several days ago, he was caught pocketing some of the family's china. I would say silverware, but your family had a suspicious lack of the stuff. You were standing outside in your courtyard with all of your servants watching on covering their mouths, trying to remain stone-faced as they watch the young man slowly cook. Fear. Fear is what keeps them in line. Fear is what keeps us on top of the pile. Do you understand, my niece? So many other great houses rule through love and taking care of their subjects she's whispering very very quietly to him so that the servants don't hear mm -hmm. is is that not something we could do why must we take this road be 
because it is the path of shadows we walk. The shadows are in your blood and they will guide your every action, Carmilla. You felt a hard substance, cylindrical, with a, with a jagged gem at the base pressed into your hand, a vicious curved dagger that you still keep on your belt to this day. If you want, bleed him. Show them. Show them that the Alizarins love a hot meal. She will take it and she will look out on all of the servants and people of her house. Uh, look back at her uncle probably with a similar fear and disgust that the other people are looking at him with or try, at least trying to hide um, and turn back to the young man and not bleed him but uh, stab him through the heart so that he dies quickly. Okay. <clears throat> we flash cut to later. The families watch him die. And there is a moment where we cross fade on the sound of a, of a hand striking flesh. Carmilla, you reel a little bit. At this point, you're maybe 10 years old and a man the size of your uncle can knock you around without much, without much care. It's not like now where you imagined the old man's frail wrist would snap on your ivory cheek. But back then, he was so much stronger. You made a fool out of me. He deserved to suffer for the indignities he placed on our family. He had suffered. He, you watched him suffer. The cattle must be kept in line. They were. Did you not see how terrified they all were? Do you want to speak back to me? Do you think? No, uncle. The shadows will control you. They will become your life. You should get comfortable with them. I think it is time for your training. And he grabbed Carmilla yes. by the wrist and took her down, down to the depths of the castle. And that was the first time that you spent a month in the Oubliette. And as you sit and stare at the fire, his voice is inside of your head. The shadows will control you. They have touched you. They will rule you. What do you do? I think she probably just kind of stares at the fireplace quietly. Lady Alessandra, and... make me an, in, uh, an insight roll. <laughs> uh, so that charisma save means that you do not have, like, you don't jump, you don't cry. You know, you're in control of your emotions from this memory. That's a 18. However, Lady Alessandra, looking at Carmilla, she looks stunned, stone-faced. She's somewhere that she shouldn't be. You've seen this. When one of your brothers came back from the field once, after clearing out a ghoul den, his best friend died. He wasn't supposed to take any man-at-arms with him, but he did. He didn't speak for nearly a month. And he had that same look in his eyes. Do I have, like, am I sitting right next to her? I assume you're sitting either right across the fire or, like, kind of diagonally enough. Enough okay. that you could, like, reach out and touch her if you wanted to. Okay. 
how would her brother's PTSD have been dealt with? He eventually... Would she be familiar enough to the idea of throwing something soft <laughs> to snap him out of it and maybe make a joke type thing? I think so, yeah. Okay. I think he's going to carry um, that way with him for the rest of his life, but he did start to process it more with your lighthearted. If we're snacking on anything small, that wouldn't make a mess. She'll oh, flick nuts. something. Okay, she'll flick one at Carmilla trying to hit the tip of her nose or something. Okay. Carmilla, one of them is going to bounce off your sharp nose. I think she kind of flinches in like a very, like, almost like she's preparing for another hit. Um, and then stops and realizes where she is and sort of does a very forced sort of haha -ha, and picks up something similar and kind of awkwardly tosses it back like pings off your shoulder or something like that <clears throat> Alessandra will I think just smile and let you like not poke at it and just flick another one back at you <laughs> but kind of just quietly amused to the sense, sense that you probably you haven't gotten one over on her with that that she yeah. saw a lot but she's not going to call you on it very fair yeah i think she'll kind of just smile and maybe like sit up a little straighter and start trying to actually like be on watch for Sounds stuff good can you make me an insight roll please carmilla yeah Mm, not great, my guy. Mm, okay. Um, insight is wisdom. Nothing. That's a nine. A nine. Okay. Um, as you are looking at her, there's going to be a moment where the gloom of that talk hangs over you. And then you're going to realize... That sitting this close with your friends nearby, the fire crackling in front of you, there's not a shadow that you are not in control of right now. You are bathed in warmth. You are safe. I think her, her shoulders release a little bit of tension, remembering back to what she had wanted to say to her uncle was that one day she would be in control of the shadows. They wouldn't control her. And as you think that, you feel a chill run through your blood. And you think there might be something to that. Hmm. 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 I think around that moment, Alessandra might offer the cup and be like, here, would you like some slightly warm cider? I think it was sitting too near the fire. But we can pretend it's mulled. <laughs> yeah, I do miss mulled wine. And these Shall might have the take spices. Take and sip at it. We could probably do it. Yes. I mean, how do you find citrus around here? Dried. I, mean, I suppose. Might be expensive. We can look. Anthea might help. There's a good chance that Anthea might have that in her bag if anybody wanted to sneak in there and try to help her it. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> she, uh, Carmilla wouldn't. Alessandra is still trying to get her to not call her lady, so. <laughs> okay. That might help. Actually. <laughs> Thinking See, of it. it makes people think less of you and thus not call you by your title. Aha! Yeah. <laughs> okay. So as you are doing that, are you thinking of going in? No. Okay. Alessandra wouldn't be that rude, but she contemplates it for a minute. So you contemplate it. As you're contemplating that, let us pan inside of that tent. Um, are you, do you all share a tent? Do you have individual tents? And Thea, do you have your own tent or are you sharing with someone else? Uh, I'd probably share with someone else. She wouldn't have her own tent. She's not really a 
Okay. Uh, Are you sharing with this, Lyric because you shared the same thing. watch? Sure, yeah. I should just be like, well, I don't really want to bother anybody else, I guess. So. Sounds Can good. I share with you? Then uh, as you are... As you're sleeping, you're getting your rest for the night. There is going to be a noise. As you're lying there resting, you hear a whisper. A whisper at the edge, at the edge of your mind. Anthea. Anthea. A voice echoes in your mind. Come to me. Come blow. And take the blade. Bleed the pale one. For my glory. Bleed the pale one. At the place forgotten beneath, beneath the stones, come to, to me. And as you are dreaming this, and Thea, you are going to jolt to wakefulness. <gasps> oh. Kneeling over Lyric. Oh. Reaching for the pack. Oh, well, the bandolier of daggers that Lyric keeps next to their bed. Their bedroll. Oh! Sleepwalking. Hmm. That's not good. I've never sleepwalked before. I have to see if there's something I can do to fix that. Could be dangerous. Just gonna pull up the blanket. <laughs> and pat, pat, pat. I go, oh. what a weird dream. Okay, let's get a bit more sleep, I think. Meanwhile, we pan to the next tent over where you hear the sound of snoring and sawing logs. And we slowly pan inside of Sindri's ear and into a large, spacious boudoir. <laughs> so came all this way to see me, did you, officer? As you see Sildar handcuffed to a bed and Sindri dressed like a skimpy guard. Well, sure. Yeah, okay, I'll, let's roll with this. Yeah, you know what? We don't have to, I was fine. I was fine with just, <laughs> yeah, just cross-fading. Yeah, Sindri's having the best night ever. Just like, <laughs> like... You know those moments when you're like, you know you're dreaming, you're like, yeah, okay, let's, let's, yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> Cinder's just pleased that no one's woken up for watch. <laughs> and so as, as you're there, Sildar looks at you and goes, I heard that Neverwinter just signed in. Stop and frisk. Well, that's over. Uh, <laughs> Cinder's gonna just like... I really need to learn how to trance. I really, <laughs> really need to figure that out. And I think that is going to be your entire night. Uh, you will wake up the next morning. <laughs> You'll wake up the next morning having had a, uh, a pretty decent rest, all of you, even things considered, um, and will be able to make your way further south toward Zorzula's rest. Are you all saying anything as you pack up the next morning? Um, which one of you put the jar of toes in my bag? Because that wasn't very funny. Yes, I'm sorry, you got very what? confused. The what? The jar of toes? Lyric will pull out the jar of toes. It was in what? my coffee materials. Not a very funny joke. Why do we still have that? Why does anybody have that? Like, out of character, that was like something like a bunch of goblins had, right? Yeah, you guys got rid of that. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I thought we threw that away. That was gross. No, so did I. No, oh, so did I as well, but clearly it's still mm -hmm. here. So, ha ha. Very funny. Maybe, maybe one of Torrance kids threw that in your bag. Oh, oh that's possible. Ugh. They are. Anyway, I'm sure we can find a use for it. No, we can just get rid of it. I don't know. Did you sort of think that maybe if we run into more goblins, it might be nice to throw some toes at them? Distraction. So at us? Well, oh, yeah, we'll that's it. We'll be alarmed too. and confused enough by it. They'll leave us alone or give us an opening. I know I'd be confused. I'd be like, why are you throwing toes at me? And then, whoa, bam! Right in the kisser. No? I mean. Oh. Okay. I mean. <laughs> I mean, return to sender, I guess. Um, yeah. If, if Listen, okay, if we don't find a purpose for them until we get, like, by the time we get back to town, we'll get rid of them, okay? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, the skull grenade Why is one thing. It's kind of cool. Something. Burying them would be more appropriate. We've you got a do. shovel. What these are from? Lyric's like holding the jar up and is looking at them. No idea. Halfling gnomes, dwarves, and people. Do we need to know? Can we not know? I would like to not know. I mean, hey, human, uh, you right? have a latrine shovel, hey? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here, uh, Cindy will just go dig a hole. Are we really just digging them, putting them in a hole? Yeah, I'm kind of grossed out by those. Yeah. Okay, yeah, just take them. Oh, lit, um, Alessandra, can you please wait me up for watch next time? I didn't mean to sleep through the whole night. Did you? Did it really good? Did we really take a half watch? Yeah. Huh. I didn't get tired. That's good. I feel great, so. Uh, I'll take first watch next or tomorrow night then. I'll be appreciated. Okay. And I guess, oh. uh. And I guess I'll make dinner too. That's the least I can do. Ooh. I'm not going to bury these very deep. It doesn't really matter, right? Hmm. I don't think so. I mean, they're in a jaw, so they're not like. Maybe put, like, put a rock over it just to ask them. Well, you don't so want the pest to out. dig them up. Yeah. I, okay, that makes more sense. And a little less terrifying. Privately, Alessandra kind of looks to the side, slightly shifty, and is all like, yeah, so they can't get out. <laughs> she <laughs> her own head. <laughs> but she gave a perfectly reasonable answer instead. <laughs> all right. And with that, you pack up, take your horses, and head further south. Before long, before lunch you make your way through the mountains slowly the train begins to the pardon me, the terrain begins to change gray gravel darkens to ash black and shrubbery becomes sparse instead of the brisk cold of the misty mountain peaks the air becomes warm Ahead of you rises a tall cliff face, which is set into a pair, oh, pardon me, in which is set a pair of forbidding obsidian doors, the entrance to Zorzula's rest. Obsidian, you say? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Is it weird that no one mentioned this place to anyone else here? Like, this, we've heard all about wells and towers and destroy towns, but no one seemed to mention, like, the really forbidding cliff faced citadel that's, like, a day away from town. Honestly, the locals here are very strange. I think the priorities are a little twisted. I guess it didn't come up. Well, it didn't make the tourism brochure. 
<laughs> Are there any tracks leading up to this? Make me a survival roll or an investigation roll. I'll make a survival roll. I got a 10. A 10? Um, yes, actually, you will see that leading up to the front doors, there are quite a few um, tracks made by goblins, but they're not particularly stealthy. Oh, the goblins are in here. Great. So do we just knock, knock, knock? Or do we just go in? Who has a She's just miming. Who has a passive perception of... Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to allow a perception roll with Anthea having advantage on this. Whoa! Um, unless, Carmilla, do you have a scent-based bonus? No, I do not. Okay. Dirty 20. Dirty 20? Nice. 17. Wow, not... 12. 12? <laughs> Investigation? Sorry, yeah. what was it? Oh, perception. Uh, perception. And 11. you have advantage. 11. Five. Five. All right. So as you're standing outside, Lady Alessandra, you are going to get this smell that permeates your lungs for a moment. And you flash back to a winter trip that your family took north. When you went, you took a boat to the Ten Towns to look at some property. This was back before any issues within the Ten Towns during your childhood, back when you could go to Bryn Shander and go sledding with dogs. But you remember this time that your, your parents took you out and it was actually a bit of treatment for your illness. But they have these lovely um, lava-fed springs. These, these like, they're stinky, but they're, they're sulfuric mineral springs. And you remember the smell of sulfur and the smell of different minerals and hot water kind of merging together into this rather pungent aroma that kind of burns your nose a bit. But you remember the feeling of warm and, God, how you wish that you could be at one of those these days. You didn't appreciate it when you were 11 years old, but now that you're an adult woman... Oh, a bath like that would be amazing. And you are smelling sulfur on the air. And looking up with that um, with that 20, uh, you are going to be able to see that there is a small plume coming off of one side of this mountain, kind of back behind the doors, slightly out of reach. Um, it looks like... It looks like steam. It's almost invisible, but you're just going to be able to notice it based on smell and the way the wind is blowing. Uh, but besides that, um, you're also going to see that um, as you are looking at the front doors, there are a pair of, um, of slits on either side of the door for arrows. So this is a fortress. Um, we probably shouldn't knock because it does look like they've got arrow slits there. Oh, okay. And we know how well that. arrow slits went for us last time. It smells very nice. Well, not very nice, but it smells like hot springs here. It kind of stinks for oh, everybody else. Nice. It's stinky, but they feel amazing. Mm. I wonder if... Hmm. I wonder if there are any around here. Hot springs? Yeah. Yeah, it kind of looks like steam up there. So I think it probably is got some vents. Huh. There are cave systems, mm. right? So potentially. I mean, you could you could probably climb up there if you wanted to. The mountain is not sheer. Hey, Kelly, how how tall is this? How tall is this? <laughs> uh, yeah. Quite a way. Uh, let me just double check. Uh, the so um, doing some math. Uh, the doors are um the oh yeah wait, it actually tells me what the doors for change um the doors are 10 feet tall and above that i'm gonna say that the doors are set into the mountainside so the mountain itself is probably about 60 70 feet tall above the mountain but it kind of like slopes back uh do, do we have like do we have some rope yeah Probably. Yes. Um, yeah, I think so. Hey, I've, 
I have an idea, everyone. Um, yeah. Can you tie these two. A uh, will tie two lengths of the uh, like, so like a hundred feet of rope together, and slink towards the wall, like underneath where the hot springs are. Mm -hmm. He's gonna take a deep breath and focus really hard on how Venom Bank swooped and flew at, flew around to them before landing into the fight, and uh, create a pair of spectral uh, dragon wings and launch oh. himself directly up the mountain to 90 feet. Whoa! Did we know he could do that? Or was that new? That seems new. I feel like that's new. That's new. Womp. It's definitely new. Do you think I should okay. chase after him? Uh, Sindri, Sindri will throw the rope down. Okay. Oh, after I don't think that's necessary. That's fair. So, climbing up, uh, you are going to... Carmilla is walking up the side uh, behind everybody in case anyone falls. Okay. Uh, you can easily do so. Uh, and for the rest of you who are climbing up, uh, you can all make me an athletics check with advantage oh. to climb the rope. Yo, not 20. <gasps> I rolled an 18. And Athletics, okay. so 19. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Carmilla, you do not 22. have to roll. Nice. You can just walk it. Uh, but, uh, Alessandra, what'd you get? 22. Okay. Uh, so before long, you are going to be able to make it up the side of the mountain, and looking down, you can see that there is a large natural pool brimming with turquoise water that burbles at the center of this chamber. Steam coils off the water's surface, rising um, uh, rising up out of this vent that you're looking down, um, which is, which is um, about 40 feet above the hot spring surface. Uh, it is large enough for a, a single person to go through at a time. Uh, and this is, it's almost like a chimney looking down into this hot spring. And the water itself is glowing slightly with a tranquil shimmer. Wow. But yeah, you can absolutely pry this, like it's an old iron grate that could easily be pulled aside. It's after probably a hundred years of having sulfuric fumes just rust it, it is, it's barely a vent anymore. Yeah, Sindri will uh, slide that aside and make a point of not dropping it. Sounds good. Uh, and then slide back in, down into that room. Okay, so you can easily do so. It's about a 15 foot drop. Um, or pardon me, about a 40 foot drop into the actual... Oh. <laughs> Oh, we have rope. It's fine. You also, do have rope. Pull it up, drop it on the other side. All right. So why don't we go ahead and swap over to the Mayups. All right. So sliding down, you can easily make it so the rest of your party can slide down as well. Just kind of shimmying down the rope. Uh, if anybody else is shimmying, please make me an athletics roll uh, with advantage. Just you're looking for a 12. I'm glad it was with advantage. Yes, yeah, same. Because that's a 14. A 14? All right, so sliding down inside, you are going to find yourselves. Um, I'm going to use determination <laughs> to okay. make that. <laughs> okay, so you start to slide down and your gloves are slick from the moisture that's coming up and you're going to like lose about five feet before you catch yourself and are going to be able to slide down the rest of the way uh now there well, is Carmilla definitely gasps and sort of like lurches forward to make sure that Alessandra's okay <laughs> and then tries to totally play it cool All right, so with that, you are all going to be able to make it down. Anybody with a passive perception of 13 or more uh, is going to notice that there is a little gap over on the eastern wall. 
and you'll see that there is an impression in it, a door that leads elsewhere. Interesting. Uh, Sindri will, like, l let everyone else take a look around the room and just, like, slide over to the the gap and just keep an eye on the outdoors, the door to make sure no one's coming up on them. Okay. So, make me perception roll. Sixteen. You can't hear anybody inside, but the stink of waste is going to waft from here. The walls are lined with long wooden benches with um, equidistant holes that look like they empty into a large trench. The center of the room is full of a trough with murky water. You're looking into a latrine, an old one. As well, as you can see, there are a couple of places to wash up along the sides of the walls, kind of like a like a men's locker room outside of or inside of a bathhouse. This is a stinky dwarf place. A hundred percent. Okay. <gasps> this is obvious to everyone except for Sandra and Chris. Um, I think I think the way's clear here. We have a minute to look around. Uh, cool. So I'm very curious about this hot spring. What's this water? Yeah. Sure. Um, anybody who oh, wants to can make me an arcana roll. I would love to do that. Oh, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, uh... <sighs> That's a 24 arcana. Okay, 20, 20 for arcana. Uh, looking at this, you can see- 24 for arcana. 24. Um, you can see that it appears to be some type of restorative magic. It's about 15 feet deep, so you gotta be careful not to fall all the way in. But as you are looking at it, um, you think that this probably was used as like a restorative hot spring back in the day, probably by the Durgar that were here before. Probably takes a while to do, but if any of you want to hop in and rest for a while, you think this might heal you. Well, seems to be safe enough. In fact, it mm. might actually be have some curative properties. Ooh, cool. But, so maybe on the way out after we've dealt with everything else. Oh, that sounds mm. nice. Sindri. I, for one, don't want to be taking off my armor in a place like this. Well, after. If we get hurt, then we can have a bath. Maybe we could do some shifts. Sindri, as you open the um, that secret door, you are going to notice that it leaves quite a bit of debris as you open it up. And with the perception roll you made before, you're going to realize that you don't think the goblins know that this place exists because it looks like it was sealed from the outside quite a while ago. You can see the remnants of some strange type of resin that's caked along the outside, it looks very dried and old, but vaguely organic. Uh, they don't know we're in here. I don't think they know that this exists. They're probably not even guarding for it. If we move quickly and quietly, we might be able to have the element of it surprise for once. Okay. Let's do it. I don't think they know that we're here. Let's, let's, let's go. If you head through, mm -hmm. uh, what, what's marching order? Uh, I'll go first. Can, Al can Carmilla go at the end? Totally. I think Lyric will probably try to go second or third, depending. Sounds good. Yeah, Anthea I think was Alice pretty high beam, but... Might try and go second just to be able to back Sindri up. Physically, if immediately they get a fight the moment a door opens or something. Sounds good. And Squish is going with Anthea. Yeah. Okay. You make it through. 
at the base of this room with the latrines, you're going to see that there is there is a door heading off to the west. On the other side, you are going to hear the sound of deep snoring. <laughs> Shut up, Clark! And the sound of something impacting hard across the room. Uh, don't be mean. It's trying to sleep, man. Leave me alone. Trying to sleep too. And after a moment of pause, you'll hear snoring again, but this time, two sets. I will open, uh, <laughs> I will unmute my mic and then uh, quietly open the door. Looking into this room, you're going to see that well, snoring echoes off the old walls. Now, now that you're inside and you open the door into the rest of the facility, the air is going to sting your eyes. And looking in here, you're going to see that the room is full of bunks. There are messy bunk beds lining the walls, their sheets crumpled. A pair of goblins are sleeping in bunks almost at the opposite sides of the room. Looking around the room, you are going to see that uh, these bunks are ancient. They look like they were designed for probably dwarves because they are absolutely just giant compared to these goblins that are sleeping in, of which you only see two, but there are quite a few of them. There's a dark opening on the western wall that reveals an empty shaft framed with a metal truss. But as you open this door and the air kind of mingles around, uh, can I please get everyone to make me a constitution saving throw from the fumes? If you have anything that helps you with breathing. If I don't have to breathe. If you don't have to breathe, um, you awesome. are going to be, well, actually make me the roll with advantage for the first breath, but unless you choose not to breathe at all. Everybody within 10 feet of me take plus three on that. Oh, <gasps> yay! Oh, wait, am I? Uh, yeah, everybody's no, I'm within. Not. Oh, I am! You are. Everybody but Carmilla takes a plus three. Okay. And so, a constitution save. Constitution save. Okay. All right, tell me what you got, everybody. Oh. All right, did anybody get a 10 or below? All real good. Okay. Uh, no. Congratulations. We have a nat 20 from Christine. Yep. 17, 17, 23, and an 18. <laughs> All right. So um, you are not poisoned. Um, and. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> any creature who s makes the saving throw is immune to the effects from the toxic fumes for 24 hours. <gasps> nice. Nice. And did Squish make the. Oh, Squish can't be poisoned. So never mind. Squish is fine. Squish. Yep. So this is great. Um, so it's going to sting your eyes a bit as you um, you catch your breath and take a look around. Uh, and you'll see there are a pair of snoring goblins in the room. You're going to have to sneak by them if you want to get out of this room. Or, who knows what you could do. Can I do something... How many beds two. are there in this room? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, uh looks like twelve. Okay. Do they so all look used? Double check uh, two of them are being room. used, but they all look like they've been slept in. There are that's, eleven that's what I meant. beds. Okay. Pardon me. A non-magical item within thirty feet of me that isn't being worn or carried that is large or smaller. A bed is large, right? A bed is large, yeah. Can I animate one of the beds that one of the goblins is sleeping on so that it sort of just like carries them away to somewhere more convenient? Uh, there is, like I said before, there are two ways that this can go. There is yeah. a door to the east that it can walk them out, uh, or there is a uh, an empty shaft on the uh, on the, you could send them down the, what the, the laundry chute on the on the western wall. 
Okay, I can I can do one of them. I would love to do that. They're asleep. We can just eat them down. That'd be fine. It's okay. not not ethical to do it, but we could do it. But it's not killing them. They'll probably be okay. They're on a comfy bed. It'll cushion the blow. Shh. Oh well. I was is this is this animate object that you have? Oh! <laughs> no, it's it's animate. Uh, sorry. It was oh, it's called... thing. It's my bard animating performance. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say, you can do like four beds at once, but no. If no, it's, if it's I just else. get one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, animated object. The the icon for an animated object is a piano, so we're going to use that, but it is a bed. You didn't just manifest a piano gonna... under them. No, that would be incredible if I could, though. And very yeah. noisy. Possibly, <laughs> Yeah. Okay, uh, there is one along the northern wall and one kind of along right by the south. Which one would you like to uh, play off? We're going to do the one to the north. Okay. I think, wait, which one's closest to the chute? Because we could see the chute, uh, right? The south one. Okay, in that case, we'll do the south. Okay. Um, now you have to play your instrument for this, yeah. right? It doesn't specify that, but I'm guessing probably. Quietly. Okay. Do a nice, nice lullaby tune. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, the bed is, you're going to head down in behind Sindri, lean in and start playing your uh, nickel harp. Nickel harpa, yes. Your nickel I harpa. Like, I haven't, okay, I, I sort of have a plan. We'll see if this works, okay? Okay. Sure. And we'll just like do the thing. <laughs> and yeah, I think uh, the bed will kind of do the thing that like Beauty and the Beast, where it like sort of like twitches and jumps. Or no, sorry, not Beauty and the Beast. I'm thinking um, Magician's Apprentice or whatever it's called. The, mm -hmm. the Sorcerer's Rain Apprentice. Yeah. The... Sorcerer's Apprentice. Yeah, that one. We're just sort of, and then starts walking yep. away towards the edge. And then we'll like try and tilt. Okay. Uh, can you do me a favor and make me a stealth roll for the bed? Uh, the bed has a... I don't know if you have different stats. I, I have the stats here. I've set the Perfect. stat block, but it uses my proficiency. Okay. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> and I'm going to roll for the other goblin as you're playing music. And this lasts for an hour or until Perfect. it reduces your hit points where I die. Okay. Okay. So All right, I'm go ahead and make me the roll. Stealth roll. Oh, I do not roll well. That's so bad. That's a, that's a five. Okay, so the bed is going to go and lurch to life and the goblin on it is going to go, what, what, what? Um, what do you do? Gork, gork. Bed is life. I... Bed is life. Um, back, 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 back. And quickly we'll go back and close the door. They're goblins. So they're... <laughs> okay, well then you go. I'm here. So they will go and just like grab the one that's waking up and pitch him down the the shaft. All right, go ahead and make me, uh, make me an attack roll. Can I get it with advantage because they're sleeping? Yep. You know, this isn't worth combat music. Uh, 26 to hit. Okay, so you're going to hop on the animated bed. Yeah. <laughs> Gra grab the goblin and just chuck him down the shaft. Okay, the goblin will look up and go, please no, and you're going to hug him down. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Most of just going to look at you absolutely horrified. I don't know what you thought was going to happen. That's a okay. lawful death. You're going to hear about about four seconds later, you can hear thump. Ow. Oh my god, it didn't die. Ow. It's fine. See? It's totally fine. They're okay. No, this is worse. What's down there? It's going to die slowly and alone and broken. Why did you uh, like hold that? on. We don't know that. As if it's a laundry chute, there's something at the bottom. There will be a way out. Sindri will jump down the laundry chute after them. Oh my god. Oh my god, he's going to go down it. 
All right, so jumping down, make me an acrobatics <laughs> roll. Why? <laughs> I'm stupid and panicked. I'm stupid and panicked. Uh, what does slow fall do? Like slow fall means that you're. you're uh, it means that you uh, take less damage everyone. from a fall. Actually, wait. I'll just use my uh, my my wings again because I can I can use it twice. So, womp womp. Down okay. Again. Uh, I'm going to roll for the goblin to land. Uh, one moment. So as you leap down, 10 feet down, you are going to slam into this goblin and are going to find yourself in a very slim chamber about 10 feet down. The goblin is going to look up at you where it is lying on like this, the bottom of this metal box. <laughs> It looks like a dumbwaiter that has gotten stuck between levels. And it looks up at you going, ah, ah, I'm ah, s my balls. Buddy, I'm just going to knock you out. This is going to be so much easier for you. <laughs> Please. <laughs> and just like, shh, womp. <laughs> like, ah. <laughs> and then climb back out of the crate. Um, so the graded floor, it looks like there is a, um, it looks like this elevator used to go down all the way to a lower level, but it looks like it's been jammed. Is there a way to get around it or? Uh, you could try to bang through it, but, uh, um, honestly, it's good to know there's another level down here. Yeah. If it's only like 10 feet down, it makes you feel less better than jumping like 40 feet down. So it's another 20 awful. feet to the floor of this, but it's 10 feet down into where the elevator's stuck. Okay. There's still one more goblin left above us. There is, above and as you've jumped down, let us jump back to that as the goblin sits up and goes, Zark? Zark? Ah, oh, fuck. And the rest of you who are back in the room, what do you do? I think the bed, Lyric's looking at the others, is gonna kind of panic, and then it's gonna have the bed, like, body slam. <laughs> okay, make me an attack roll with the bed. Like, Ella's still outside the room, and she's kind of seeing all this happen, just being like, this isn't a proper fight. Should I be stopping them? Uh. Oh. Uh. Okay. Oh, just sleeping. <laughs> oh no. Oh boy. Um. Are, okay. Is this oh, now that we've kind of gotten a view on this one? Is this like a regular? It is one uh, of those goblin, psionic or is goblins. This one of the weird looking goblins. It's one of the weird ones. Oh boy, well, hey, yeah. this is a force empowered slam. Is what I don't this think thing there has. is anything okay. bad about no. dealing with these. All right, go ahead and make me an attack roll. So, the good news is I rolled a two. Let me just check what that adds up to. Um, wait, it's not prone. There's not advantage on this, is there? Uh, yeah, he's prone. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. So, this is my spell attack modifier to hit. The reach is five feet, so it has to be a move up to it. One target I can that I can see. Okay. Well, I've got this. That is a total of 19. To hit? To hit. Uh, that's to absolutely hit. going to hit this prone goblin. This is fine. This is fine. And then the damage is uh, not as much as it could be, thankfully. Oh, but I rolled max damage. Okay. Um, 1d10 plus proficiency Kabong. bonus in force damage. That is 13 in force damage. As the bed 13 just goes in force up damage. And slams. Yeah. The bed is damage. going to slam down, and the goblin is going to let out. Please, <laughs> no. Okay, I think, I've got, I think I've got it pinned at least. What the fuck? I give up! I give up! I give up! Oh, okay. So, um. Shh. 
<laughs> please, please no. Zorb, Zorb don't want to die. Zorb don't want to die. So we can just knock him out, right? <laughs> right? Please. What? Zorb don't want to die. Please, please. I me help you. Me help you. Me help you. Unless he's speaking common. Yeah, he's speaking common. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. I actually kind of understand. I was just expecting it to speak up then. Okay. <laughs> sorry, I um, have a bad accent. We took my classes. Okay. I'm just not used to it. So, if you just like stay here and, and don't <laughs> alert anyone. Zorb, be good friend. Zorb, be good friend here. Zorb, introduce you to other goblins. <laughs> you know, you, why you're here? Why you're here? You're not here. Kill goblins, right? Uh, not, not necessarily. Huh. I'm not sure what to do in this situation. Normally, there's a big fight and everybody's really grr. Okay. So. No, we hold it here. Bad. So, why are you here then? Big jerk like Sithid. He make us stay here. Make us do stuff. Big brain like Sithid. Yeah. Fight. Oh. A big what? Big brain. Big, big. Head brain. Meat. He, he's smart? He thinks he's smart. He has big head oh. meat. Oh. He got, he has big rock stuck in head. Fight. Fight. He's big oh. stink. He's head of, he's head of tribe. Oh. So why don't you just leave? Can't. He had a trap. His oh, boss. Well, what if somebody else? Well... Do you have big head? No, but we have other resources. I mean, you, you help? You help with, with monsters? Uh, monsters down below? There's monsters below? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, they eat goblins. Don't like. Don't like. Oh. Well... We introduce you to other goblins, maybe? Maybe you can tell them? Right, okay, so, um, just one moment, and Lyric's gonna have the bed, like, back up, oh. very, like, walking backwards <laughs> off. <laughs> like, All right, so at this point, Sindri is going to climb back up into the room. So it looks like we're not killing the goblins? Oh, good, I didn't kill the one down there either. Okay, um... But there's a giant brain that's running the place. But this one here said they can introduce us to the other goblins, possibly. I'm not sure if that will just result in a gang of them trying to kill us all at that point, but... Briark? Briark? It's been yeah. a goblin for that sound. Thank you. Thank you. Also, how many of you are here? Um, uh, one, two, three, four. I don't, I don't know. M many, many. There's, there are many in Sopley's. We are, we are Sopley tribe. Sopley Lovely gang. Nice to meet you. N nice to meet you. Meet me, Zorb. Hi, oh. Zorb. Where, where's Gork? Oh, Zorb's taking a nap. Uh, lo long no, nap? You... Forever no. nap? Medium nap. Oh, medium nap's pretty good. Unless... Unless you have bed jump on you, that kind of suck. Ow. Sorry about that. Ow. Yeah. Um. Who's it's this? Okay. It's okay. I'm okay. Just don't kill. Don't kill Zorb. And he's going to give you a thumbs up, and it's at that point that you're going to realize that his elbow's been dislocated the wrong way by your force attack. And he's giving a thumbs Ew. up with his elbow bent backwards. <laughs> he's going to look at it. Look at you. Zorb new learn new learn new trick. No, that's not the right way, I don't uh -huh. think. Um Oh, oh. oh. um um uh. wait, I can help you. I can uh -huh. help you. Tick 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 and Thea's gonna tick 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 pat pat over to him and um cure wounds. Slap. You're gonna hear a horrible crunch. Ooh. <laughs> Slap. <laughs> And the bone's going to reset, and he's going to give you a shaky thumbs up. Thank you. Good. All fixed. You're welcome. Oh, um, no hot feelings, right? Um, uh, okay. Yeah, me not, okay. Me not kill you yet. 
Or maybe ever? I don't like Can we ask you one question before you inevitably pass out from this pain? Uh-huh. Have you... This is going to sound incredibly insensitive, and I don't mean it to be. Have you always looked like this? Um... You mean, was me like Young Goblin? No, you and your friend, you don't look like regular goblins. Um, and we have seen many that look changed like you uh, do. Rexethador, he do with powers from the gods. Hmm. He's speaking to this mighty gods with, with crystalline brain. Crystalline brain. Let him speak to gods. What color is the crystal? Uh, or is it like in his brain? It's, it's in. It's in. It's, you ever see... You mm. ever see unicorn? It's like that. So it sticks out? Uh-huh. Yeah, he kind of What go, color is it? Um, green? If it's not black, make it up. <laughs> it's green. That's green. <clears throat> oh. Alright. Oh, like a green? She's gonna take out the little bottle with the rock. Yeah. Like that. Oh. Hmm. Um, I'm going. I, I do small sleep now. Okay. Yeah. Good luck. Okay. Don't kill. <laughs> and he's going to pass out. Oh. What, what are you going to. Oh. Um, Dimitri introducing us to the other goblins. Should we tie him up? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Do you want to? I mean, we probably should, because then that gives him a reason for why he didn't attack us, and he will, hopefully won't get in trouble. True. Because he's oh, fairly yes, useful. That's a good idea. Also, that way he doesn't get like pressured into attacking us. And reinforcing. Does anyone know this creature of who he speaks? Was it a name or a type of creature? Mm. Rook sounds like a name. Rook is the name, name of the name. goblin boss. Mm -hmm. uh, also, that there's like a, a lower level below this floor. Uh... Oh, the goblin did mention something about monsters that eat goblins down there. Below. Oh. Down below. Yeah, that's right. So, okay. maybe that? Is so the shaft's it? clogged, uh, but there's, uh, there's something down there. Um, maybe that's for the best. Yeah, but we can take care of the things that are eating the goblins. Or, God, let's just find Rexithid and get them to stop raiding our town. Yes. Oh, Plots? our town. That sounds nice. Oh, are we considering it ours now? It's... Well, we live there. I guess so. I sort of kept thinking we were still just visitors, so... But yeah, I suppose. At this point. I mean, we pay rent. Well, they pay us. But yes. Ah, the circle of economics. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's keep going, I guess. Let's tie up our friend. Put him in the latrine. Mm -hmm. Oh, what about just put him on a bed? Peace offering. Oh, top bunk. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh no, he might fall if he's tied up. Then just what? put him over there. Fine. One's fine. <laughs> and it's clear. Doesn't look like it's about to collapse in a second. Puts him back on the bed where we found him. <laughs> All right. Shh. All right, and then who is opening the door to the east and heading through there? Do you want to go ahead? Poke Sindri. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's go. I'll be right behind you. All right. Hmm. And with that, you open the door, which leads into a room full 
of blue-tinted lava that flows through geometric carvings that run along the wall's top edges, bathing the room in eerie light. Three rectangular stone tables stretch the length of the room along several sets of stone benches. A handful of goblins sit at these tables, shoveling gritty white porridge into their mouths. And as you enter, there is a clatter. And then, suddenly, the eating stops. And all of the goblins turn and look at you with an eerie silence filling the room. Take me to your leader. And I think we're going to call game there for the night. <laughs> that escalated quickly. Take me yeah. to your leader. I oh, love dear. it. Oh. All right. Uh, so, hey, folks, thank you so much for uh, joining us for this episode of Pandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk. Uh, we have a lot more that is going to be happening soon, but I'm going to be calling game early here. Uh, we're having some tech problems, and uh, we've got two players that really need to go to bed. So uh, I think this is a great point for us to finish the next, the rest of Zorzula's rest next episode. Uh, so I look forward to having you with us for that. Uh, so... Uh, a big thank you to everybody who came out tonight, and a big thank you to all you players. Thanks, guys, for showing up. I know that sometimes when you're feeling bad, it can be really easy to take games off, but I love that you took the extra effort to, to come out here and to, you know, animate some beds and stuff like that. Um, and before we say goodbye, though, a big thank you to our sponsor, Bookworm Games, and to our producer, starting with our divine producer, uh, my mom. Hi, mom. Thank you very much. Our demonic producer, Precarious and Kelowna Curd, our wizards of the Patreon, Tammy the Forever Cleric, the Ink Goblin, and Sorcerer Sanguine, and our now upgraded high council of the patreon uh taryn dustin amberthist raven with baubles karasha urquhart chef eladeth laruk mike baxter iridian and brian kaler thank you so much for joining the high council and for all of the rest of you who joined patreon this month quick reminder that if we hit 175 patrons uh christine's gonna run a regency era D, &D game and i'm dedicated to playing a character named uh tuscamus orkington Lord Tuscanus Orkington. So I hope you join us for that and get us to 175 patrons. I'd love to break 200 by the end. A truly intrepid adventurer. A trepid adventurer. I, I'll even get tusks that I'll have to slur between. Uh, but that's going to be it for us tonight here on Fandalver and Below. Come back tomorrow for the Shards of Nern and Wednesday for another episode of Transylvania Chronicles. We'll see you then. Good night, everybody. <laughs>